If you see the reports that come out of the Davos and the World Economic Forum, all the CEOs have top of mind how this will create efficiencies. The hype is there. Hello and welcome to 11FS Fintech Insider Spotlight, this week in partnership with Microsoft. I'm David Breer, the CEO here at 11FS. In this show, we shine a spotlight on the best and brightest in the tech and financial services industry to get to know them, their businesses, and what they really think the future of the industry will look like. So on today's Spotlight, I'm delighted to be joined by Theo Michalopoulos, who is the General Manager of Financial Services and Insurance over at Microsoft. Thank you for coming in, Theo. How are you doing? Very well. How are you doing, David? Busy. Yeah, I mean, the, the year has started with a, an absolute bang, hasn't it, in terms of uh, uh, all of the changes that we're seeing all around the world, which is really exciting. I'll be honest, uh, we'd be bored if we didn't have anything to do, yeah, wouldn't I we? I agree. So um, what we're going to be doing today is talking a little bit about Microsoft's AI journey. I mean, this yeah. is a... Uh, as we were talking about before the show, I mean, this is a, a journey that is very much beginning in terms of the whole world, in terms of where AI really is. We're going to look a little bit about the, the challenges that we've seen in 2023 and, and everything that is, is ahead of us. Um, but maybe if we start off before we dive into the, the sort of AI-ness, tell us a little bit more about yourself and your, your role yeah. at Microsoft. Yeah, so I am the general manager for Microsoft in the UK for the financial sector, which includes the banks, the capital markets, and the insurance and investments companies. And uh, I lead the team that is helping these banks and these organizations, the insurances, to uh, on their digital transformation journey and uh, to thrive through technology, AI, and all the new things that are happening. So on a personal basis, I am here for the last six months, so I relocated with my family in uh, September, actually, even less than that. I used to be the general manager for Microsoft in uh, Greece, Cyprus, and Malta. That's where I come from, I'm a Greek. And now I'm with my family and my two daughters in uh, London. Very good. How have you found the, the move to London? Are, are you uh, acclimatizing to the food and the weather? Or uh... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, it's a big difference for a Greek, uh, for a Greek one, but uh, it's lovely here. You have so many things to do. The scale is different for the city. So, yeah, I enjoy every every little piece of that. Very good. And you've been at Microsoft for, for a little while yeah. now, haven't you? Is it nine years? I have been here nine years. Uh, I mean, the, the organization must have changed wow. dramatically over that period. Dramatically, because I joined just before Satya Nadella took over as a CEO. And uh, that has been a very, it's a huge shift that we have made over the culture of the company, but also on the focus areas, on the priorities. Internally, you can feel the different empathy in the culture that was important in delivering what we have to do. Imagine that we transformed from a software licensing, I would say, business software licensing uh, company to a platform company. And that was not easy. We need a different kind of developing products, different kind of selling products, different customer focused approach, customer success approach, I would say. And uh, the cloud business was very different than the previous software business. So. I think that we did well on that shift, and now we are working on the AI, which is now a paradigm shift. So yeah, over the nine years, I've seen so many different things that I'm very happy and uh, proud to work for this company. Yeah, and, and the financial services. I mean, the FS is very different over the last nine years as well, right? So uh, yeah. that sort of coupled, I mean, it's a fun time to be working in this space, isn't it? Yeah, actually, it's, uh, you know, it's the fact that we, we do get the opportunity to transform and uh, democratize, I think, financial services at the end of the day and give access to so many people. And um, the financial uh, industry has always been a key focus for technology because they are offering the service. Probably it was always number one priority. But I would say now that you see how you can connect the dots and deliver different experience to their customers and uh, you can find ways of doing business in a different way. And the challenges with the neobanks, with the fintech, I think all of that has uh, created a different environment in how these big customers or smaller are adopting technology. So yes, it's an amazing place to be. We, we sort of joke the, the services are being put back into financial services, aren't they? And, uh, yeah. and actually, AI plays a big part in that, you know, the service yeah. that you can get, the consistency you can get. I mean, 2023 was a big year for AI. I mean, yeah. there's probably a... a decade of uh, conversations about it and different incantations of uh, you know uh, you know what it looks like what it's going to be and it's going to yeah. you know change this and do this and whatever but um how did it kind of impact you guys in 2023 i mean the the ai offering from microsoft seems to have really really grown yeah and uh, if we 
take it back a little bit to see how AI has transformed the world. We can go, actually the, the term AI was first came into practice in somewhere 50 years ago and uh, in a totally different context, of course. Then 10 years ago, we started working on the uh, deep learning uh, neural network. So we started seeing that stuff. But uh, and uh, during uh, five years ago, we started the collaboration with OpenAI and our uh, CEO was uh, Satya was focusing a lot on that area. But overall, on the field, we were focusing on other things. It was the cloud transformation and the digital transformation. It was a, a lot of AI, but not Gen AI. So I think that the chat uh, GPT and GPT in general 3.5 was the point that we all understood, and our customers, of course, that something big is happening. So mm-hmm. yes, I would say that 2023 was much different than 2022, where we had the idea that this was coming, but somehow the rate of change that happened with uh, GPT 3.5 was massive, yeah. and then 4. And I think then we started seeing what could be different. Sure. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, financial services is uh, very rarely a, a leader in something. I, I mean, I'm not casting any aspersions, anybody. <laughs> like, this is not like a step your game up financial. But, but, but the idea that uh, you know, chat GPT and Gen AI more broadly in various different guises, I mean, changed how normal people were talking about doing things, you yeah. know, and it was it was sort of penetrating everyday life in pop culture and everything. So, so actually, you know, we've seen tech revolutions before that are all tech people doing tech things. But when it starts affecting normal people, it starts changing the, the expectations of other industries. So, yeah. I mean, how have you seen... You know, you work across lots of different slices of financial services, yeah. but how have you seen them respond to that? Because you know, usually it's uh, it's when they're, they're they're living it, they're feeling it in their uh, their real lives, not their work lives, that then they can really see how this can change what they do for customers. Yes. So first of all, there is a big hype. So you can see a hype coming from all different parts of the organization, including the board. Yeah. So there is a, it's the first time I have witnessed, uh, even versus the past, so much hype coming from the board on what is this? How can we create efficiencies? Even if you see the reports that come out of the Davos and the World Economic Forum, all the CEOs have top of mind how this will create efficiencies. It will help us do our uh, customers more uh, happy and all that stuff. And um, I think the hype is there. So now, taking a step back, we have to remember that FSI and especially the uh, banking uh, world, it's uh, very regulated. And this is a probabilistic kind of approach versus a deterministic. So we have to remember that we need to do the usual stuff in terms of regulation, which is uh, the right governance in place, the right controls, the right security and the right things in order to ensure that this will work out. So everyone in this industry is taking a step back in order to ensure that everything will work as it should with a human in the loop whenever we, especially in the beginning of this journey. So we all have this kind of approach in FSI, but we've seen already customers moving in this direction. So on a, on a Microsoft basis, I have to say that one of the key things we did is that we utilized Gen AI for our software as a service products, if we can call them, like uh, the employee uh, capabilities, and I'm talking about Copilot, M365 Copilot. And um, this is big. And this is big because, don't forget that some of the banks say that we work on Excel, right? Which is not a great thing. We want to change that slowly, although Excel is a great product. I think we overuse it sometimes, and there are other tools like Power BI and uh, internally that we can um, we can lead with. And this is, however, if you have a um, co-pilot on Excel, it totally changes the way you work. So these are the things that we're seeing happening. And slowly we will move from uh, using an M365 co-pilot to delivering a bank's co-pilot for their customers and for what they do best, and an insurance co-pilot, yeah. underwriter's co-pilot. And that's kind of stuff. Well, and that changes the fundamentally changes the service of a, an organization there, doesn't yeah. it? Because you're you're actually helping people make better decisions, which ultimately the regulator likes. You know, they the regulator wants customers to be treated fairly of across the board, whether it's Singapore or the UK or wherever, right? So exactly. um, that 
is based on data. That's based on having good, timely data and access to that, isn't it? So, but, but what do you see the challenges then? Because um, to your point, this is a, you know, AI has been around for a long time. AI covers a, a million different things. It could be, you know, Gen AI is a, a slice of how we sort of interface into yeah. the algorithms, but actually those things learn. It, this tied into what's happening in robotics or, you know, to your point, the data connectivity and cloud computing. It feels like there's a, a real sort of confluence of forces that means people can provide services that they've never really done before, which yeah. is exciting again, isn't it? Yeah, and David, I would start, uh, there are a few challenges. Again, this is a paradigm shift, so there are challenges around. The first one, you very well said it, is uh, the data. You need the quality of the data and you right, need the right data at the right time to, to utilize and make the right decisions. Because if you use wrong data, you will make uh, the most uh, confident uh, mistake ever. <laughs> uh, and that's what, why we need to ensure that we have the right data infrastructure. Sure. Are the modern uh, are, uh, financial organizations today in the right place to do that? Let's be honest, there is a lot of technical debt especially with uh, big uh, companies which acquired smaller banks, for example, or insurance companies. And uh, that's a first step because the new world requires the right data at the right place with the right um, way of accessing controls, security, GDPR, all that stuff play on this equation. Yeah. If you get this right, the outcome of any Gen, Gen AI uh, scenario, it will be Perfect. So the one is the maturity in the technical debt, the data infrastructure you have in place, and that's something we are working on. Because let's be honest, it's one of the things, the technical debt that we have in some organizations, we are a little bit behind and we need to uh, support and empower to move forward. Yeah. And uh, so, so I would say that this is probably the biggest challenge. The other one is about the regulation and the security controls we need to create and the governance we have to take in. It's something new because it's not only a technical transformation, it's a business transformation, sure. the way you utilize an AI. And that's an interesting one because now we need to get all the business people involved in what exactly is this and how we can do mm -hmm. things differently. Because if you use the existing processes and you use an AI to solve, you will create some efficiencies. Sure. But magic happens when you think, I don't need this process. I have an AI. I can do it in another way that will unleash, uh, unleash powers for a bank to do what they're best at, uh, work with customers, provide loans, uh, create investment ideas, similar for an insurance company. And as you said, it's, I think it's democratizing many things because underwriting, you can do it on factful approach using different uh, stats, numbers, yeah. and you can take some of the biases that, let's be honest, humans have. Of course, if you use the data of today, probably Gen AI will create biases, but you have a, we have a huge opportunity, and that's something we as Microsoft is focusing on, to take any biases out, mm -hmm. so to create the approaches that will be fairer than what we do as humans today. Yeah. It's, it's funny, isn't it? You know, going back to that point, it, it feels actually, look, this is like high tech and sci-fi, you know, <laughs> like, and you can't explain it to your mum quite in the way that you, but, but actually like the idea that really you're using data sets to basically give people better advice and better guidance. Yeah. That's what people want from financial services. You know, we've got, a, we've got a view that really most transformations have led to kind of like self-service apps, you know, like that. And that's, that's not this. This is something different, isn't it? You know, they... The self-service is a monolithic structure. It's what am I doing in savings? What am I doing? With my Whereas actually having systems that can dance across those things yeah. gracefully and you know break down subject matter to explain it to anybody in any way that they want to, that's an amazing future for financial services, isn't it? You know? I, I agree. And uh, I would say that one of the fundamental difference of, of Gen AI is obviously the one thing is about resonating over a huge amount of data, which is amazing with the cloud power and the, the opportunity we have. It's a, it's a big thing. But the other big thing is the natural language. Mm. So the fact that we have the opportunity to discuss and uh, collaborate uh, with, uh, uh, with a website, on a website with our natural language, that's unique because that's a problem of my mother and my father sure. doing uh, financial services, doing banking. They don't know how to find it, how yeah. to ask. Yeah, it's all of the acronyms that put yeah. people off and make people 
scared of making the wrong choice, don't they? But yeah. uh, so that, I mean, the the use cases are seemingly endless, aren't they? You know, yeah. and actually, you know, is that an interesting point to get people to where do they start? You know, like when you can do anything, deciding what you do first is always the challenge, isn't it? So, I agree. And uh, basically, we we ask uh, we we work with our customers because this is new, by the way. We are learning with our customers. We are finding out which are the best ones and. Not which are the best, which ones will have the biggest impact in the beginning and yeah. which ones will enable the organization to focus more and create uh, work streams that will deliver value for them. Uh, I would say that there are four different categories of uh, uh, areas that we, we all focus on. The first one and probably the easiest to go in is the modern workplace, as we call it, the collaboration suite. So the fact that you have co-pilot to work with teams, to work uh, in Excel, as we said before, it's probably the area that will have the biggest uh, impact in the first place. By the way, there is a co-pilot over there that is very important for the developers' world. I, we call it GitHub Copilot. So supporting the development of uh, software yeah. is a huge one because this will enable also, uh, uh, the, will augment developers' capability and will create better uh, digital services for uh, for the companies and their customers. Yeah, and that's great as a public thing, but even yeah. in into team, isn't it? You know, actually, you know, gone are the days where you need to write the you know five thousand page manual of yeah. uh, how does this thing work. It's like yeah. actually you can interrogate it in fundamentally different ways. Yeah. yeah, we have reviewed also internally our teams when they are producing, uh, when delivering code, etc. We have seen something like thirty percent improvement wow. in time to market. And doing, and the interesting thing is that it it replaces replicable things, repeatable things, things that uh, you're doing without adding value. And so you allow the developers to focus on what gives them the greatest satisfaction about their job. Yeah, the innovation part, how do they create new things. So that's very important, and I think that's probably the one you can get the best value out immediately. I can't think of many FSI organizations around the world that will not give the opportunity to their developers to utilize yeah. Copilot and work faster, better, and easier for the future. 100%. Do you want them cutting code or do you want them writing docs? You know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's my first one, I would say. Now, the two other scenarios that everyone is kind of the second step in looking into that, the one is summarization. Mm. So the typical scenario is the in a, in a customer agent, you have the opportunity to know what has happened in the past, to what is the customer asking, yeah. if you don't know exactly the answer, to look. So the customer agent that you talk to can be very much prepared for that. And of course, you can create a chatbot that the, you can... Today, the, in the previous world, the chatbots were not... We all have experience with that. We wanted them to be a little bit more clever. Sure. And that's what we do. If you see Rabobank, for example, we have a nice case that we have developed a chatbot that actually takes you to a human agent whenever this is needed, sure. not before. So I think that this is a great scenario and will actually make customers happy about them. So the other scenario is about automation. And uh, automation is a big one. Automation will take out unnecessary complexity for businesses. And I think it will take out tasks from people that they don't enjoy doing yeah. and they will help them doing things that also add more value to the company and for themselves. So. Uh, automation is there. And the fourth and probably the most inspiring one for all of us is how do we create new products sure. from Gen AI? That's the fourth category. I think this is a little bit uh, on the next uh, stage. But uh, how do you invest uh, in a world uh, that you can have a Gen AI to support you, but based on your requirements and yeah. what do you want to do? ESG. And uh, what does this mean? Uh, I think that all of us as investors on a private life, much more my mother or my father, the opportunity to ask dumb questions yeah. that many of us are not doing to, uh, to people in the bank, etc. It's an amazing thing. So we, I think it can uh, democratize investments, for example, and yeah. in a similar context, insurances, etc. It's, um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? That, uh, that uh, almost the assistant for your financial yeah. life. You can really see how... Uh, Building on the blocks of you know open banking everywhere in the world yeah. is changing, and you know like we say the advancements of data connectivity and, and cloud computing. You know it feels like this is sort of almost the the last piece that makes yeah. it truly beneficial to customers. But but I, I guess all of that, I mean, all of that sounds amazing, doesn't it? And it sounds like uh, you know when we were growing up, if we were living in a future where 
we can talk to a computer in the way that we want to and it would understand us and do things for us. Like, that's the future. But it still feels like this is sort of scratching the surface, doesn't it? Yeah. The, the potential is huge. I mean, you, you touched on it a little bit where, I mean, you're learning and sharing with the community and with organizations and that feels like much more of a collaborative process now than ever before because it's not a, you know, you create a product, you go to market with a product. The, the loops of iterations and exploration are much greater and probably much more quick as well in terms of the, you know, your team's feedback. So that must be different as well, right? That's yeah. sort of touching on that cultural point you said earlier on. Yeah, I have to say that this is new for all of us. Like even the capabilities and the new things we're offering to the customers. If you see what has happened in the last year, I'm trying to learn and I have to uh, invest time because it's so new for all of us that we need to learn. Even if you're an engineer or you have been uh, worked your way through that, you have to learn all the time. And it's what you said, David, that we don't have the answers. We haven't, we haven't seen. So when you were asked, what's the best uh, scenario, the most impactful scenario? An easy answer is, we don't know. We are seeing as we speak. Sure. Things are happening in the last year that have never happened. Now, having said that, I think that, um, that the opportunity we have is, uh, is to connect the dot, doing the right steps, taking the right processes. It's all around the governance and uh, how we create the right uh, thing. And we have some insights on how this would work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, but it's a collaborative thing and we have to bring the best of uh, our people, of uh, our customers and what people want. And then we will, I think that, but this is dynamic and this will, this is something that we're focusing as we speak. Yeah. It's a tough question, isn't it? It's like going, um, what's the best thing people have done with electricity? It's like, <laughs> yeah. well, there's, there's lots of things and there's going to be more things. And, yeah. you know, so it changes, doesn't it? But again, that's the, you know, we say, thank goodness we work in financial services in uh, 2024. I think uh, 1960 might have been quite boring, but uh, today yeah. is pretty exciting. Yeah. And I, I guess looking at the, the year ahead, you know, we sort of talk about the, the technology changing and people's adoption changing. And what are you guys hoping to see uh, throughout the course of 2024? So basically, I think that there are two different levels that I would like to think that we're working, for example, as a, in the FSI sector in the UK. The one is continuing to deliver the transformation on the, on the basic things. It sounds a little bit strange to call basic a cloud transformation or ensuring you the data structure, you have the data infrastructure to support all that, or you digitize uh, some of the processes you have. But this, for the Gen AI world, these are the things you need to have in place. So managing the technical debt is a big thing that we're doing. Being uh, at the end of the day, Gen AI cannot work. There will be small language models that can work on-prem, but in general, you need the power of cloud yeah. to deliver the, most of the scenarios we are aspiring to get that. So basically, one of the work is working on the basic things and uh, managing the technical debt that we have in, our, in, uh, in the FSI world. And the second one is to work in scenarios, pilot, create some uh, MVPs, and then seeing where we get the best value out of that. By doing that also, you will ensure you understand where in the organization you have the opportunity, where, what you have to do better, who is going to develop this, mm. because it's a, don't forget we're developing applications, right, at the yeah. end of the day. So you need a different way of thinking about different uh, places in the organization to drive that. So by doing some pilots, we will understand and the, our customers we will understand together where we need to push more and what we need to do more. And by that, I hope that in the next year, it will be the, the year that we will start creating uh, scenarios that uh, our customers will create impact for their customers. So my vision is when a UK, uh, uh, when a customer of a UK bank will say, wow, that was cool, that was important, I saved time. Yeah and how we will create a better satisfaction rates for customers in the UK, and how at the end of the day, the uh, banks in, in, in UK will become more competitive versus others. In US, for example, that is typically a big 
financial market as yeah. well. It lets, uh, it lets digital scale in such an amazing way, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's, uh, that's really exciting. It's interesting when you, you sort of touch on the, the, I mean, there's loads of construction going on around London. Yeah. Uh, if you don't get the foundations right, the, the tower's never going to be as tall as you want yeah. it to be, isn't it? Exactly. So we, we sort of saw a similar thing, I guess, with mobile banking, where, yeah. you know, mobile banking in, you know, financial services, it was almost the first time people were really getting to deal with um, microservices, architecture, exactly. and everything that went with it. So, uh, you know, cloud has always been a, look, this isn't about where do you have your data center, it's about a fundamental operating model shift, isn't it? Yeah. And, and this feels like almost the, the next step to get people to, you know, go beyond robotic process automation, go beyond yeah. just where you have your data center to really having digital capability in the back office, which is yeah. exciting, isn't it? Yeah, two things I would say there. The first one is that probably we will keep needing RPA and we will keep doing some of that. And I believe in a hybrid world, in especially in FSI, you will always have the on-premise world. So some of that will be there, but there will be some of the things you are doing today, you might be okay doing them this way because it doesn't make sense to move everything uh, in the other way. But I do believe that we need to to focus on how we can do things differently because it will be inevitable that in order to follow the, this world of Gen AI, you will have to do the things uh, differently. And on the other, on the second topic, I have to say that I still remember customers trying to migrate on cloud using architectures from an on-premise world uh, without the microservices. And uh, it was amazing to see the, the challenges that were created and the, the pushback that uh, this is not delivering and cloud is not working. And suddenly, when you are modernizing and re-architecturing, and maybe, you know, I think we were moving to cloud some of the applications that no one, no one was using because it was legacy. And so thinking about which applications need to move to cloud, which application we don't need, so which of them will be re-architectured. So this way of thinking, I think by definition, this will create the biggest benefits, even in a Gen AI world. Which yeah. ones do we need? Which one we will replace with Gen AI? which ones we can do in another way, so we don't need that. So yes, I totally agree with David that this is a, a new way of thinking, similar to what was cloud, even more, I would say, in some yeah. perspective. And uh, yes, and ultimately, I have to say that imagine a world when it's more outcome focused, like imagine where you don't have to go in your application of the bank to pay something, or get, uh, you can just say to your phone, that uh, I want to buy this, uh, just send it to my place and uh, pay via my yeah. ex-bank uh, account. And all of that would happen in this uh, store, in this uh, size, in this bank, and with the security guidance of that. It's not now, this will happen many years, but that's what Gen AI can offer. To yeah, us. it's exciting. I know I've said exciting about a thousand times in this interview, <laughs> but, but it really is in terms of what we can get. Oh, yeah. I'm sadly we have run out of time. So uh, we're going to have to come to the end of the show pretty quickly. So thank you so much, Theo, thank for you, for joining us uh, and actually telling us about all of the, the changes that are happening there. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about where people can find you and all the great work that you're doing? So I would suggest that uh, everyone checks out uh, www.microsoft.com slash AI, where we have all the latest uh, info about where technology is going. And of course, you can connect with me over uh, uh, LinkedIn. Very good, very good. Right, that's all we have for you this week, unfortunately. Uh, make sure you follow 11FS on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, all of the social media at this stage, apparently, uh, to stay all up to speed with all of the cool stuff that the team are doing. And if you enjoy this show, do subscribe to the 11FS YouTube channel, where you can catch all of the other previous episodes as well. Have a great week, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.